At Veritone, we are delivering on the promise of artificial intelligence. AI is a key to building a safer, more vibrant, transparent, and empowered society. Whether it's helping the world's leading media and sports organizations unlock revenue streams and gain efficiencies, partnering with public safety agencies to extract evidence from any source, accelerating the judicial process, or empowering brands to maximize ad efficacy and content monetization, Veritone's AI Wear operating system for AI powers it all. Veritone is democratizing AI across the enterprise with hundreds of cognitive engines that unlock insight into video, images, voice, text, and data analytics with enterprise class scale, in the cloud, or anywhere, processing four years worth of video and audio content every single day. At Veritone Labs, our engineers are constantly evolving AI wear. One of our latest lab's innovations adds trust and explainability to AI, helping enterprises measure performance to detect drift and bias. Another revolutionizes application authentication with biometric multi-factor single sign-on. And now, Veritone is excited to announce its newest solution, ushering in the future of media technology, Marvel.ai a synthetic content generator delivered as voice as a service. Marvel.ai leverages AIware to produce hyper-realistic professional and custom voices through text-to-speech and speech-to-speech. Veritone's ecosystem of partners continues to grow, delivering AI-infused solutions across industries. Veritone best-of-breed professional services organization ensures we meet the specific needs of our customers and partners. Veritone, leading the AI revolution. The future is now. All right, thank you. Um, there's a lot there, right? Um, we can go maybe to the first slide, and we'll, we'll give you a quick little history of the journey that brought Baritone to where we are today. Um, and I think for, for many people, entrepreneurs who have gotten into the AI space, um, for us, it started with a personal problem that we had with one of our previous businesses. Um, I've been in the advertising technology business since the mid-90s. Um, you know, we were the, sort of one of the pioneers for ad management, ad serving based businesses called AdForce, way back when, for those who may have remember the name, um, where we used to power and manage all the advertising for legacy properties like Yahoo back in the day, and Lycos, and GeoCities. Um, and what's really interesting about that business, and you, you, there's a lot of similarities and continuity to everything we're doing today, is we were forced to deal with lots and lots of data back then, right? And we had to deal with data fast. I'm trying to, start, trying to, to make a decision on what ad to serve to the right individual when they hit the right website in a few milliseconds is very challenging. So thankfully, right, we had experience with neural networks really early on, right, in their kind of, I would say, or in their infancies, at least in, in the, the uh, terms of the web. So let's, I'm gonna talk specifically about what Veritone is doing today with media and entertainment companies. And we're gonna go through a couple use cases, talk about a, a few featured clients, talk about some of the new innovations that we're working on with our customers, and then by all means, want to open up for questions. So next slide, please. Do I have a clicker? Oh, sorry. Oh, there. <laughs> Whoops. User error. OK, just a quick snapshot. I guess we're one of the older firms in pure AI. We were founded in 2014. Um, my brother and I started the company. Um, it's, it's, been, uh, it's our sixth business we have done together. Um, and we're still working together. We actually have maybe probably 20 to 30 people um, at the company today that go all the way back to our very first company. Um, we are, we've grown substantially over the last few years. We have a little more than 500 employees, um, really based around the world, but our major hub in, in sort of populace is in the United States and also in Israel. We have about 1,800 customers that kind of span the gamut, but um, the super majority of our customers in terms of numbers are actually in media and entertainment. And they span from movie studios to broadcasters to podcast companies, even professional sports teams like the Bay Area, San Francisco Giants. Um, and we do work with partners. So you know, our, we're product and, and technology people to our core. Historically, we've taken our products directly to end customers. This business, depending on who you're working with, we actually are the subcontractor at times. So we'll work with larger partners like a Deloitte, like a Kerasoft, and others. 
Okay, so we'll give you a little bit more insight. All right, so why AI? It, you're gonna hear this over and over again, so we'll go quickly. There's lots and lots of data, right? Particularly in media and entertainment. We've had you know, a couple major trends that have really impacted the volume of content that's being created. Uh, number one, storage compute, in, right, and storage and compute expenses just gotten so incredibly cheap, storage, that they used to, back in the old days, when they were making a feature film on film, they would actually shoot about four hours of total footage for the final product of one hour, okay? Four to one ratio. Now it's about 1,000 hours for every hour that you actually see, okay? Why? They're just letting it, it's, it's almost cheap. Like just let it run, right? And we'll, we'll put the expense and stuff in editing later. You don't wanna capture that potentially perfect moment, right? Second is the resolution, the, the actual file size has gotten so big. We now are you know, spearheading and sprinting into 8K. That is also putting huge strain or producing a lot more, not just more content in terms of hours, but in terms of file size. And then their whole nother phenomena came out where we are the producers now, right? The creator economy has exploded, right? And you're just some stats and you guys there, and I think we're gonna be posting this presentation on our website so people can by all means come in and grab it. But we are the producers these days, right? We are the creators in all different formats, YouTubers, podcasters, right? All that is going into the ecosystem. Somehow, it has to be organized. So what are the different types of content today because of AI and machine learning that we can add to this index of media, right? It's no longer the days of just Google or Lycos, right, indexing static HTML pages, primarily based upon structured text, we now have the ability to tap into unstructured data sets. Linear television, audio, right, phone calls, right, anything, all these data sets that historically you didn't think could be part of an actionable index in a database, now can be very quickly and efficiently and accurately interrogated, organized, and made actionable. So you can, if you think of an un, unstructured data set, you, we now can actually harvest that and make that valuable or part of your decisioning process and your ecosystem. Everybody's doing it, guys, <laughs> right? So <laughs> if you're not in the AI game or at least have a plan or a budget, right, in your AOP budget for 2022, you're, you are definitely in the minority, right? Um, this is going to change almost every single industry, right? We're talking about supply chain today. You name an industry, right, AI is gonna have a material impact to that business. And so it's either gonna be dictated to you or you're gonna be trying to embrace it, right, and, and help differentiate your business, or frankly, for many people, just it's gonna help you survive, right? Because business is even getting shared. The world is getting, at, at times, more consolidated, right? There's more power going to a few different companies, right? You need every tool at your disposal to remain competitive. But to be clear, your competition, if you're not, they're doing it, right? So you better have a, a good investment and a good strategy of how to invoke it. Um, before we jump right to the AI machine learning side, I think we, we are, still in a transition period where people need to understand what are their data silos, right? Before I think of how I wanna apply AI machine learning to my business, particularly in media and entertainment, right, are, all my digital, are, 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 are all my assets even digitized, right? How can I start to act upon if I have a library of old tape, right? Or I have all these different data silos or a bunch of paper documents, right? It's imperative that you have a complete inventory of, and have a clear understanding of what are your data silos and what potentially is the expense right, of actually digitizing, right, and making those data silos actually actionable, okay? So we're big fans of the digital transformation, right? Companies need to, in my mind, get to great data-driven competency first, and then they could say, okay, what's machine learning AI gonna do to take me to that next hyperscale level? So understand where your media assets are. A lot of our customers are multifaceted. Um, you know, the, the CBSs of the world, the iHearts of the world, they are in almost all forms of different derivatives of media, social media, video, audio, radio, podcasting, right? All those are now part of their ecosystems. So one of the most basic outputs of the first element or the, of once you've ingested and indexed accurately in the right format and the right structure, your, your assets is search and discovery. We'll call it, we kind of like to say it's the Google, right, of your, your media empire, your Disney. Disney literally has so much content, right? And, it, and historically, it's taken them a very long time to just actually cull down, particularly as I, I just articulated, when you're shooting 
a thousand times more footage before the output product is actually released, you need a, that much more robust ability to search and find things, okay? And you can't have humans do it. And it does come down to time and money, right? So I'll give you just a few things. So we like one of the things you know, that we kind of do, and I'll call this is basically table stakes, is really what, you know, what Veritone and other groups who, who are bringing a, a, a multi-cognitive approach to analyzing media assets, it's really like what Google did to HTML in simple text form. It's what we're doing now with unstructured linear content, right? It's, at the end of the day, about money, okay? This is kind of the average expense it used to take for humans to process and index and tag one hour of content. Disney, in, in a presentation by Anthony, who's in their data science group, they estimated historically for them, it was over $4,000. You're like, how can that possibly be? We're talking like color hues, right? You know, alignments, every derivative you of dimension that you could to define a frame of video, right? That's the level that they have been doing historically for years. Um, they have a project called Project Genome, which we're a partner of, that helps kind of feed into that, that ecosystem that's trying to automate that. The good news is now is that the, the technology of AI machine learning with the combination of cheap compute, thank, thankfully to some large partners like AWS and Azure, allows us now to get human accuracy scale at a fraction of the cost, which means not only are we saving money, but we can now index a tremendous amount of more content, right, and still save a tremendous amount of dollars. So here's an example of a customer of ours. Um, CBS, and we'll talk about ESPN in a second, um, we're indexing almost everything for them, right? And, and it's been, it's like a, like a lot of businesses, it was like baby stepping. In 2016, in 2015, late 2015, you know, I think we started out with just some old archive material of CBS News, right? And we have to, you know, some of it was digitized, some of it wasn't digitized. You know, today, you know, we're, I think we've, we're up to, just on their archive, about 15% of CBS News' historical archive is digitized and fully indexed. So the Apollo moon landing, Martin Luther King's you know, March on Washington, those iconic events looking back in time. But as we've advanced and as they've started to see great actionable value right, of what they're doing, meaning solving problems and, and solving use cases, they now have made more investment and really their vision is to index every single one of their assets. right? But even, even assets they didn't really think that they were really required. It's not just about their primary assets, it's also then, I'll call cause and effect. What are other correlated, correlated data sets that might be valuable to them? They're in the media business, right? One part of the media business is subscriptions and advertising. So what about, is it possible, if we've already now ingested all this content and we've indexed it, right, with the right cognition to produce that great metadata, is there any potential correlation to our Nielsen, our ratings, right? What about our, what about our advertising rates? Is there uh, a response that when we hire that new host, can we find out in a couple weeks why our ratings drop 15%, right? Versus having to wait till the next book comes out in, in four quarters. So that's what they can do now. You can make this content actionable and you can actually look at real time correlations between audience, right? Consumption, engagement with a video against the content itself, right? Not just the metadata describing the whole file, but actually frame by frame, what's working and what's not working, okay? HTML kind of cheated for us, right? Born in the ad tech space. It was all structured. You were kind of forced to adhere to certain standards in HTML, right? Image source tags. There was, there, there was key attributes inside these documents that allowed us to target more effectively, even in the web. We're actually just now catching up to be able to do this more effectively in linear-based kind of content, video and audio, et cetera. ESPN, very similar. Start off with, you know, initially just radio, right? They, their whole vision was we wanted to index in near real time every piece of audio-based content we produce, primarily syndicated over AM and FM radio. That's ex expanded very similar to CBS, where we're now ingesting almost all of their different assets, both linear, digital native, podcasting, bringing into that same corpus, right? Creating, in effect, an intelligent data lake for them of all their content and now the associated time-correlated metadata that they can immediately start to act upon. Programming decisions, you know, how, it's amazing, and we're almost mystified of how quickly they can get um, highlights out now, 
There's a reason for that, right? Everything's indexed in real time. S sports, there's a lot of third-party data companies like, well, obviously Nielsen, but you may be familiar with Sports Radar, right? Michael Jordan's program. That they, they do the play-by-play -play stats that you see almost in real time, right? Then it's basically an army of humans that are creating that data set. We now can correlate those data sets to the actual linear video, right? Kind of really cool stuff like that. But again, they made the decision, and obviously they had some interesting, you know, they had some, a, a general understanding of a business model of how they would pay for all this, but they eventually said, we need to build and own and manage our own fully indexed intelligent data lake of all of our content and all of our data sets, right? So I, I would say all of our clients are probably still in the first couple innings of their journey, but the good news is they're already seeing significant yield out of that, and they're investing more. San Francisco Giants. Um, I, does the video play after this, or are we going to have the video, Jerry? I don't know. Okay. So we picked a couple clients that have some you know, local relevancy to the Bay Area, but San Francisco Giants um, has been a great partner and client of ours where we helped um, go back into their rich history of content, both you know, their original archives with Willie Mays and stuff that, again, was not digitized, all the way up to the content that's being produced. I'm from LA or Orange County, so you know, unfortunately we guys knocked you guys out in, I guess, the divisional round. We lost the next one. But San Francisco, obviously, that was the World Series for all of us in the know. But it's been, it's been great that we've now made that entire legacy archive and their new content fully actionable. And we'll, and we'll show you a video, it's also on our website, that you can hear from our customers um, exactly of you know, what, what, it's been, what it's been able, enabling them to do to not just expand on the fan experience, but just make their own job that much more efficient, right? Ad efficacy, it's, it's another use case. Um, you know, what, what we've done, let's take um, iHeartMedia, which is a big customer ours. So today, we ingest and, and sort of analyze um, all 982 of their radio stations and all their podcasts. And in real time, we, by the way, we ingest all those live streams and then we index those using speech separation and time-correlated NLP, right? Speech to text. We put that in a database very, very quickly. And then I also have done a correlation with their ad traffic system. So I know what ads are supposed to be running on their stations. So now I can look at, right, cause and effect. Did I see that commercial? Did it air or not? But it's not just the, pre the predefined ads, the commercials that we all know, the 30-second commercial. So much of advertising today is native, meaning it's organic. So it's the radio host that subtly, during his talk, his talk weaves in Geico, right? No, no metadata ever existed before. Right now, it's full 360. So now I know and can have full 360 of not just when pre-produced commercials are, are, are aired, but also I can identify in near real time and analyze the efficacy of a native-based ad, okay? Um, same thing, in a, we work with a lot of customers, ESPN does it too, on the video side. There's logos now. If anybody watches golf these days, more often than not, they don't even leave completely to go to a commercial break. You kind of stay in the split screen, right? There's reasons for that, right? They want you to stay engaged, and they're now weaving in more and more advertising with the content. So what it's now enabled us to do is, is identify not now, now with great accuracy when the ads are actually clear, clearing and in what market, and then in near real time, we can actually do real-time correlations to foot traffic, right? Are we driving people into the stores, right? In, in their car, geo, geo, uh, geolocation-based data. Um, are we driving people to their website? Full integrations with you know, Overture from Adobe and Google Analytics, right? And so in effect, we're, we're, we're now empowering a lot of groups that Basically, we're getting their lunch handed to them because they didn't have the attribution and analytics that digital had, and now we're sort of empowering groups who are living still in a broadcast linear sense the ability to have the same type of, of efficacy analysis, right? All done very, very efficiently, and now it's all fully automated. So today, we have about 8,000 users at iHeart um, that are trained. We actually created a product because um, so, this workflow was so efficient that we, we actually named it Brilliant Name Attribute. Um, and that's the actual um, application that about 8,000 people at iHeartMedia use um, for real-time attribution for their 100,000 unique advertisers per year. Another example, I'll skip over just for time. Westwood One, um, many of you know, they're, they're kind of the original audio um, syndicated network. They have thousands of programs that are syndicated everywhere. 
and they're, they're, they're kind of the 800 pound gorilla in audio for all sports. When you hear the NFL or most, most, or most college sports over the, some form of audio, right? digital audio, traditional um, AM and FM, that's Westwood One. Same thing, same thing we've done. S separated the speakers, indexed all their content, right? and now they can make it actionable in near real time. They can give their customers and clients near real time proof of airing, right? which I, I guess back a few years ago was a hard thing. <laughs> right? um, but now it's done fully automated and they can now cut it up and push it out socially in near real time. So just think of the speed they can, so this has enabled them to consume more, index more, organize and distribute. Then what that equals is more money, right? Speed to get news, particularly news in sports. The time it takes, this, the importance of getting that information out fast is everything. The bell curve of consumption, if, if, you, if that content eventually shows up on a YouTube, all the impressions, as you can appreciate, show up in the very beginning because that's when something breaking news is most relevant. So speed for news and sports companies is critical, again. And the only way you can, you, can, you can take advantage of that opportunity is if your content is readily available, actionable, and fully indexed. Um, a new fun one. This, is, this came as a byproduct. Um, and obviously it's you know, in vogue these days because of a certain big company changed their name to the Meta. So the Metaverse is coming. It is going to be a, a very big thing. I'm a, I'm, a big, I'm, I'm a big fan of the opportunity, right, of what the Metaverse is going to do. Um, but here's what was exciting for us um, when we, with a few of our customers that have kind of almost fully invested in the AI opportunity. If you take, go back to like CBS News, they've, you know, we've in effect created this huge, you know, multi-petabyte data lake for them. All their content indexed, right, time-correlated metadata. And it, when we, we brought to them an, a new class of cognition, which synthetic content. Hey, is, is it possible? We have all this content. It's fully indexed. And a byproduct was that content is actually training data. Could we start to build, right, synthetic versions of your talent's voices, right, for different, different reasons? Um, and this is a, a, a new product we actually branded called Marvel.ai. Um, that is, again, is a product service offering of Veritone for our customers that allows us to very quickly and efficiently build hyper-realistic synthetic voices, right? A digital clones, right? It, um, and you could say the negative connotation is a deep fake. We like to say is we're the quality iTunes version of that. But we work with some of the biggest companies now, the biggest personalities, creating digital twin voices of themselves, right? For a multitude of different use cases, right? Um, most, uh, most of them is time savings, right? When you're doing a production and you're spending a fortune with some of these, 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 this talent, um, getting them come back into a studio just to change the name of a, of a commercial spot, for example, to say New York versus Los Angeles makes absolutely no sense, right? Uh, does anybody know DraftKings, the company? All right, so they're probably everywhere, so they're a big client of ours. If you hear a DraftKings ad on the radio today, that is actually not a real voice, right? Oh, it's all programmatically, synthetically generated through Marvel for them. It's gonna save them a significant amount of money, right, just in the course of, of a single year. And there's a lot of different use cases. Um, you know, we all have some experience with digital voices, Alexa. So we're just trying to actually, really looking at it, is it now for our customers, can we take it to a hyperscale function? Give you a couple examples here. So you reach deep into your pocket. Sure enough, you have an extra velament. So you look directly at Bob and say, would anyone else like a velament? Velaments, good breath, good day. All right, so you heard me talk, right? That's my real voice that's supposed to sound. So if it sounds different, maybe I was nervous in the studio, right? So now here's you know, text to speech. So you reach deep into your pocket. Sure enough, you have an extra velament. So you look directly at Bob and say, would anyone else like a velament? Velaments. Good breath, good day. Okay. La Patagonia es una región en Sudamérica compartida por Chile y Argentina. Tiene montañas, glaciares, lagos y otras características maravillosas. Es una región increíble. En la Patagonia, como en la lengua española, siempre hay algo nuevo para descubrir. Now, I, don't, I, I didn't write the script. Did I make a mistake? Oh, time up? Oh, I got, okay, I got to go quickly. Um, all right, so this is me, I just did in context, but we, um, we, we actually, Randy Hahn, who many of you know, it's a local, he's the play-by-play uh, the -play announcer for the uh, Sharks, yep. Um, he's, a, he's a client of ours, just give you real quick to hear his voice. But what's so exciting about this is, and the reason I want to show you the translated one, is it's not just 
you know, saving time and effort for them. But l let's take a podcast, for example. And I'm just going to yeah, skip Randy. Yeah. I know he's going to get, he's local. But now we can take a podcast. You, you, you invest and create this killer show. Localization, for, for if you want to take a, a movie or a show and you want to translate it and make it localized to different countries, do you know that's a $54 billion industry, right? Now you spend the money create a killer, killer, killer podcast. We can actually maintain your real voice, and I can syndicate that in 38 different languages, right? And not just in some arbitrary third-party voice, but in the sound of your voice, right? The days of when you watch a foreign film, and it's no longer Brad Pitt's voice, and his name is actually Tiberius, I believe, in Germany, those days are going to be gone, right? I mean, these, the, you know, these, these, this talent, that's their brand attribute, right? The sound and tone of my voice, Tom Selleck's sound, is part of his, his likeness. So now we can actually preserve that amplify it, and even change the language if you want to. Who doesn't love... Amcor recibe muchas críticas de los expertos en podcasts. Right. Que han Come to marvel.ai. It's, it's a whole separate microsite that we built. It's in, it's, it, we had a, you know, kind of a, a self-service fun program to do it, and you can actually play around with the technology. Um, and this kind of ties up. I mean, again, every, I don't think every, any, not a single one of our customers has not called me or, or one of our team asking about, oh my god, what, what, what does this really mean? And the best news I could tell them is you're in the best situation to take advantage of it, right? Your content's already digitized. I'll, um, there's, I'll give you one example. Um, for those who know what Fortnite is, um, if you play yourself or your children, they did a really phenomenal event where they had um, a Martin Luther King experience, right? Uh, civil rights experience inside the game, right? It was in Washington. When you go into that experience, you actually will see linear content of Martin Luther King's speech and other things inside the game that came from us, right? That actually was CBS News' content. So just think of now, because they've invested, they fully indexed it, they immediately can act upon those type of things. So the metaverse is not just digital to digital. The metaverse is also, as I just articulated with the Martin Luther King example, taking linear, if you will, offline digital content into the meta metaverse as well. I'm a big fan of it. And, I'll, and since you know, it's, a, it's an afternoon, I appreciate all you guys coming. And your, the, the ratio is pretty good. But I, I, I was informed that we're giving away how many? Four Oculus Quest 2 VR glasses to, for everybody who showed up in this session. So I think we're, if you had to get scanned, so my team is exempt, right? So therefore, your odds just went up. You're welcome. And so I guess one out of four of you are going to be walking away today with a new Oculus Quest. But anyway, that's my presentation. Hope you guys learned a little bit. Any questions? If we have time, I know we're way over. No questions? Okay. I think we're good.